Are you looking for an easy way to get your film from Premiere into Resolve, color grade it, and then get it back to Premiere so you can finally export it and get it on the web? In this video, I'm going to share a few tips to make your life easy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Richard. I'm a Los Angeles-based filmmaker and photographer. And on this episode, I want to share a few tips to quickly get you up to speed on the Premiere Pro Resolve workflow. I know you want to get back to your project, so let's just dive straight in. So here is my locked video. I'm really happy with it. I've done the sound design. I've done the mix. I'm now ready for color. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves and kicking out an XML and going into a resolve, we have to flatten our timeline. So here is my flattened timeline. I've tried to flatten as much as I could to make my life easier. We don't want to have to grade additional shots if we don't have to. But with that, there's a few exceptions. For instance, everything that I have on V2 has warp stabilization in some flavor. There's different rendering options that we have, um, but all my warp stabilization is on V2. On V3, I have anything that has been reversed. These do not come well back from Resolve, so I take the step to put it on their own individual track so when I get the files back, it's not gonna have any issues. After doing all that, you might wanna kick out a offline reference clip that you can use within Resolve to double check everything once it gets into that program. Let's now go into Resolve. So here we are in Resolve. I've gone through, I've imported my project, I've imported my reference video. I can make a second video about that later, but I've gone through and I've taken the steps to get my footage and my XML into Resolve. We launch our sequence right there, and boom, immediately we have a problem. Things didn't scale right, we're having issues. Um, every shot for the most part is like that. Okay, what gives? This isn't right at all. You need to come to image scaling in the project settings, and then center crop, no resizing. Every should be great. Fantastic. And then we can use our offline reference clip. You come here, you say off, offline, after you've imported it, again, I'll do another video about that at a later date. And we can quickly check to make sure everything is okay. And for the most part, it's looking fine. However, there are exceptions. For instance, that's an After Effects file. Resolve is not going to recognize it, so that would be something where we'd have to address it later. The same thing could be said for the 2-pop that I have here. That's a Premiere Pro asset. It's not going to be recognized. Everything for the most part looks fine. We can jump to our color tab. Um, I've already gone through and color graded my project, but this is where you'd go through and do your grade like you normally would. From there, deliver tab. I've set my settings as Rec 709, Rec 709A because I'm on a Macintosh computer, and I will set a destination. Yes, I want the offline clips as well. I'm going to say add. Um, but the first thing that I forgot to do is I need to check my destination. And for this, I did a workflow demo um, folder, and I'll put all my assets there. Boom, got it, perfect. Add to the render queue, yes, add. And then from there, we would render our media. So that is basically the workflow that I take in Resolve. Yes, I've gone over this rather quickly, but it is pretty straightforward. Now when we go back to Premiere, we shouldn't have that many issues. There's things that we're going to want to look out for, but nothing major. So let's jump back into Premiere and get this thing finished. So here we are back in Premiere. I've imported my project, and this is where I would start making any final changes to the video so I can get it ready for publication. Again, everything on V2 is for warp stabilization. So that's what I'll do now. I'm going to add warp stabilization to all those clips. Now when we talk about all the shots that I've done speed changes to, the ones that aren't going to do well are the ones that have been reversed. For instance, that's really jittery. Something is up with that. Well, that's because it came in at 5.5% when it should be 100. And it should be good. There's a few other shots where I need to do that, like this one here as well as those two shots there that also need to have adjustments made to them. It's also a good idea to go through and double check to make sure that any effects that you applied came back as you intended. For instance, that gash and blur is wrong completely. 
So at this point, I'm just gonna delete it to make my life easy because this is just a demo. There's one more right there. And I would do the same thing. From this point, I would just watch my video, make sure that it's in a good spot. I'm happy with everything. The color is consistent. There's no major problems and I would export. So that's basically my Premiere Pro Resolve round trip workflow. Yes, I went through it rather quickly, but I wanted to get you up to speed relatively quickly so you could get back to the project that you're working on. If you have questions or comments, please send me a comment below. I will do my best to respond and um, answer any questions that you might have. You can always um, make requests for other features and tools that you would like me to go into detail. But that's all we got for this episode of the vlog. But as always, create, share, and sustain the life that you want. Get out there and make some awesome work. Thanks, guys.